Hey Queens, I'm Saul. And I'm Mason. And today I'm super excited to show you on Charlotte my beloved 1991 Alfa Romeo Spider. So for those of you that are not familiar with the Alfa Romeo Spider, it was produced in four different generations. This is the fourth and last generation. It was sold between 1990 and 1993. I'm going to bungle some of these numbers because I'm doing them off the top of my head, but bear with me. Um, it's the only generation of this that had uh, the availability of an automatic transmission, which unfortunately we do have here. Three-speed automatic, all sorts of fun. You're not going anywhere in any sort of hurry. Um, designed by Pininfarina, we'll kind of show you around the car. Um, Originally, it came with rotary dial hubcaps on it, but as one corners as one does in a sports car, the hubcaps can tend to kind of part ways with the vehicle. So we pulled the hubcaps off, um, and we're just running the normal steelers, which we spray painted back black, as you can see. Um, this is a base model. Obviously, on the Series 4, you could get the base and the Veloce. Um, Veloce would have had some nicer seats and a little bit nicer trim. We did put the roof in from a Veloce, so it's a nicer kind of cloth top rather than the basic scratchy canvas that came with this. Um, kind of look at this. Um, the term Barchetta, which is used actually as a model name for some of the similar Fiats and some of the older Alfa Romeos, uh, means little boat. And you can see why cars like this, even if this model wasn't specifically, are referred to as a Barchetta because the styling, the pin and Frida body, really does kind of look like a small speedboat. Um, Kind of has a bow break around the front, and you've got the cute little Alfa Romeo nose on it as well. I had somebody point out to me because we had to kind of weld glue slash tape the rearview mirror on the driver's side after it fell off, and so now it kind of looks like a cute little puppy dog because we couldn't get the glue to set straight, which is always fun. I'll pop the hood here real quick. All right, here we have the mightiest of power plants. This is a two liter fuel injected four cylinder with 120 horsepower. As I said, this is mated to a three speed automatic. So people in traffic love to pull up next to you when you're driving this thing, kind of like, you get people in WRXs and Mustangs, kind of like, eh, eh, wanna race, wanna race. Um, this thing will get outrun by a Sprinter van. So for the love of God, if you own one of these, just stay in the right lane and let everybody go by. Uh, that three-speed is geared, geared like not quite low enough for it to be quick off the line, but it really hates highway cruising even more than being launched. It's happiest between about 25 and 60, which don't yeah don't launch it and don't try to go highway speeds in it. But other than that, you should be fine. But it's a really pretty engine, as you can see. I mean, a lot different than today, where you open up an engine cover and it's like, oh look, a plastic shroud. Here's parts. I don't know what any of them do. I'm sure Mason could probably tell you all about what all these things do. I know this is where the oil goes because it says oleo, which I'm told is Italian for oil. You learn something Only the finest day. extra virgin. What? I said only the only finest. Only the finest extra virgin. <laughs> no, this car has been a lot of fun. A little bit uh, on the story about this particular car um, while he shows you the interior here. Uh, we got it from the second owner who was a family friend. He had it for about 12 years. He is also uh, a really big enthusiast into kind of the weird, um, wacky European cars. At the time that he had this, he had he was living in California in the Long Beach, or excuse me, Newport Beach area. And uh, he had this, he had a 99 XJR supercharged sedan, a Jag, and he had a VW Phaeton. So he was just kind of out to collect every unreliable, quirky European car that he could find. Um, after a certain point, because he wasn't driving this much, it sat not running. Eventually he moved across country uh, from LA area to Atlanta area, didn't want to take this with him. So he had it set up to us, this sat in our garage for a couple of years, uh, and we got it fixed up. Um, none of the electronics, apart from like some of the headlights and the horn and the tack work. It stopped working with like 22,000 miles on it. We think it's somewhere around 40,000 miles now, but honestly, who the hell knows? Um, but yeah, I've had this for quite a few years now. This is the fifth or sixth year we've had it with it actually running and like the ninth year of it being in the family. Uh, and it's a lot of fun to just drive on a, a day like today when there's wonderful weather out. It'd be a lot more fun if we weren't stuck in the middle of Nebraska because the nearest corner from where we are is something like 160 miles away. Um, but hey, what are we gonna do? So, okay, before we start it up, I just wanna say I actually think from the back, admittedly with the door closed, it's kind of one of the better angles on this car. 
We've got the full width light bar, which they did, again, only for the Series 4 Spiders at the end there. Uh, that was pulled off of the 164, the kind of big executive Alfa Romeo saloon. Uh, the single central exhaust pipe here, um, which looks fine here, but which is actually dangling down into the middle of the car, which is delightful. Um, and it's just got a nice tapered kind of streamlined little look. Very cute. Um, so. Yeah, the back's also the best angle because there's no damage on it. Yeah, the back is also the best angle because that's the place where it's been crashed into the least. Uh, the front has been hit a couple different times. We'll gloss over that. Mostly important. All right. This is delightful. You get wonderful little chimes and beeps every time you do anything. Queens, today's a, today on Gears and Queers. Oh God! My friend Saul tries to uh, make my anxiety flare up by I'm taking. I'm trying to drown a, you to death. Is what yes. I'm trying to do here. But. By taking a 30-year-old Alfa Romeo through a touch car wash. Touch. Shut up. <laughs> oh, first blood. Help. Oh Christ. You might want to put your hand like there. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm wet. <laughs> at least they've got cool, pretty lights for us this to look at. This is like, at, that's yeah. terrifying. It's a little, a little much. I'm not gonna lie. This is like, you're, this is the final destination. Oh, we're yeah. See. We're gonna get stuck in here. Yep, we're gonna get wet again here. Yep, a little bit. Yep. Oh, it's coming through the foot well. Delightful. Technically, just as much could go wrong at this last part, yeah. where there's no water oh, yeah. involved. I'm gonna hold on to the roof just in case. Also, point of uh, kind of question: Do kids like this little acrobat dude? Yeah, I just know. freaks, freaks me, out. me out every time. Yeah. Run away! Run away! <laughs> We're never doing that again. Just as a small aside, um, after going through the car wash, um, the, the door pocket is just like full of water. Um, so every time I close the door, it uh, splashes me. Yeah, that's all by design. All right, not only is this car an automatic, but uh, it has a special unique feature that even most modern automatics uh, don't have. Paddle shifters are all lovely and great. Dual clutches are all lovely and great, but how many other automatics do you know where you can take off the shifter handle while driving? Only the finest Italian craftsmanship in this machine, as you can hear as we scrape over the speed bump. Uh, a little more information on the Series 4. Um, the styling of the interior is a lot different. Um, it's updated quite a bit. You've got a driver's side airbag, which A, was kind of advanced and unique for this segment for 1991. Uh, it only appeared on the Series 4. Obviously, it doesn't work anymore. That would just be silly, but it's there um, with a little airbag warning light blinking away. Um, on the automatic, the transmission is kind of here where you'd expect a transmission to be. On the stick shift, which was a five-speed, um, you've actually got the transmission coming out of here. So all these climate controls are moved down. The radio is actually down here and facing sideways, and the transmission lever is up there. So it's kind of an interesting layout uh, for the manual, and they completely switched it around for the automatic to a more conventional sort of layout. Uh, other than that, essential features front and center you've got. Actually, I'm not sure this is an ashtray because it's plastic, so that might not go well. Um, but we're going to pretend it's an ashtray because we're going to pretend to make jokes about the Italian smoking. And then, of course, down here, the ever-important cigarette lighter. Uh, but other than that, it's got power mirrors that don't work. Uh, it's got a stereo that sort of, kind of, sometimes works. I just bring a Bluetooth speaker because that works better. It's got a cassette player, of course. Um, it's got heat, which does work. It's got air conditioning, which doesn't work. Um, looking over here at the lovely, uh, what the hell brand was this that made these uh, gauges? The Jaeger, the old Jaeger sports car gauges. We have got a working tack, a semi-functional oil temperature gauge, a virtually non-functional oil, oil pressure gauge. Uh, I have no idea about the battery volt meter. The gas gauge is not the most accurate, but it does work. And then obviously the trip odometer, the regular odometer, and the speedometer do not work. 
Uh, in any other car, it would be super helpful to be able to go, but officer, I was only going 17 miles an hour, um, but this realistically tops out at about 70 anyway, so it's not that helpful. And as you're probably getting a sense from through the camera and through the noise of the top rattling behind me, it's not the smoothest riding car in the world, nor is it the most solidly screwed together. This is not an SLK Mercedes. This is not a Z4 BMW. This is definitely not an NA Miata. Um, sometimes stuff falls off of it while you drive it. The parts falling off are of the finest Italian quality, but that keeps things exciting. It gives the car personality. Um, but that's why we love Charlotte. She's a trooper. Um, and we're keeping it in the neighborhood because for lack of an Italian mountain road, that really is where this car is happiest. It's kind of puttering around on a nice day, smiling and waving to everyone as you pass. It's like being in a one-person parade. Lots of fun. Well, thanks, guys. I mean, uh, who'd have thought? I didn't know Alfa Romeos were amphibious. You know, Jacob, you really do learn something every day. You know, I don't know about you, Christopher, but I thought the shifter coming off was a really convenient sort of, you know, uh, feature for, you know, loading cargo or maybe switching seats with the passenger if you want to do like a quick driver swap. I mean, I, I think that's great. I mean, we love an adaptable, versatile queen. And um, in this case, Alpha just disassembles herself for easy. Yeah, yeah really, easy really pulls use. out front in the pack. I mean, who would have thought all those innovative safety features? But thanks, Saul. Thanks, Mason. And if you want to film a community review, just reach out to us. Shoot us a DM or an email, and all you need is an iPhone, and we'll do all the editing for you. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Uh, uh, <coughs> bye. Mm -hmm.